Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm, I'm uh, so happy that you uh, chose to share a little time with me. We're gonna talk about a number of things today that I think you'll find interesting and helpful. Um, I do wanna do a little shout out to all the folks that I got to see at the Houston uh, Quilt Festival, as well as um, other quilt shows. If you see me out and about, please do tell me that you're a part of the clubhouse. I would love to meet you, I'd love to get a hug. It's always so much fun to um, see where everybody is from and, and to meet people you know, in 3D. So um, if you would, over in the comments section, tell me where you're from. It's always nice to see kind of how far flung everybody is. And um, we always do this as a live stream event on both our, uh, our Facebook group, the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse Facebook group, as well as on the Quilt of Joy YouTube channel. And truly the best compliment um, and the best thank you for all the hard work that we put into bringing this to you would be to share it with someone that you know would um, appreciate some of the information because what we cover would work on both sit down and stand up machines so if you know someone that um, might enjoy it um, please do share it so i do want to alert you that we have a really special thing coming up in our newsletter that's going to start coming out um, on wednesday november 13th we're going to roll out um, designs every day that are holiday themed free motion designs free uh, downloadable free motion designs and they're going to be in our newsletter so I want to be sure that you are signed up for our newsletter and that you open them up it'll start again on Wednesday November the 13th and I'll have a different free motion design for you to download every day so that you can have some free motion designs in your pocket for those holiday quilts and it'll walk you through step by step and there's some beginner ones and then there's some ways to take those beginner ones and kind of kick it up a notch if you are um, more comfortable with free motion and you want a little bit more challenge so I've got that all uh, ready for you it's coming up as we head into the holidays and um, just be sure that you you have signed up so I wanted to make sure that people have a chance to kind of file in and, and start watching so do we have a, a good number of people that have uh, come into the clubhouse Rachel where, where's everybody from? Is anybody saying hello? So I just want to say hello to, to, to folks. Um, we're here in Louisville, Kentucky. If you're ever going through Louisville, Kentucky, please do stop by um, Quilt of Joy. We'd love to see you. We've got Patty from Atlanta. Hi, Patty. Hi. We've got Tammy from Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Tammy from Missouri. Hi, welcome, Tammy. Barbara from New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Barbara, welcome. Idaho Falls. I've heard that's beautiful. I do want to go there, Sue. We got Karen from Iowa. Iowa, favorite place, yeah. Uh, Beth, Hi, Karen. Beth from Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky, all right. Yeah. Beth, that's where my two kiddos go to school, so welcome. And, uh, Barbara from Radcliffe, Kentucky, too. And Barbara from Radcliffe. Yeah, well, we're filing in as we go. We've great. Great. We have um, all over the country, and we even pull folks in from uh, Europe and Australia, too, so it's always fun to see who joins us here in the clubhouse. Um, so, like I said, in the newsletter, starting on November 13th, you're gonna get a free downloadable holiday free motion design. So I'm gonna go through one. We have like a bonus one just for our clubhouse people that I'm gonna um, share with you today. And I do have it as a downloadable just for our clubhouse folks. And it'll be available um, for the next month there at Quilt of Joy. Um, so be sure that you visit that link that will be on your screen and it'll take you to the downloadable. You'll just put it in your cart like a normal product. And when you check out, it'll be $0. And then you'll be able to download this so that you can get some tracing paper out and lay it on top of the pattern and kind of trace over what I've drawn and get to know this design. So the design is called um, a Pine Trees and Snowflakes. So it's actually two designs as one. So let's just break it down and let's just look at the pine trees part of it first. And of course, pine trees are nice and straight and tall. So we want to have some registration lines. So I'm going to just draw it here on the computer. So for registration lines, I'm just going to use, um, let's use like a gray. So, and I'm just going to give us some, some registration here at lines here to go so that our pine trees stay nice and tall. And so this is what I would mark on my quilt with some chalk or something. Okay, so it's the holidays, so let's choose a nice bright uh, red thread. Let's get a red one, that's orangey. Okay, we'll do this red. All right, so I'm just gonna um, draw my little, um, my little pine tree. So I'm gonna come in and it's loops. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put the first bow, 
bow down. <laughs> that's hard to say. So that's the bigger one. And then I'm going to come up and make sort of a medium one. And then I'm going to head towards the top of my registration line and I'm going to do a small one. And now I want to put the top to my pine tree. So just a loop. And now I'm going to head back down the other way. Small, medium, large, and then swing. Large, medium, small, top to my tree, small, medium, large, swing, large, medium, small, top, small, medium, large, swing. I'll do it one more time. Large, medium, small, top to my tree, small, medium, large, swing. Okay, so that's my pine tree. And by the way, I have found I really like it if I come back and just do a little whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop. Just like a little echo line under the little pine trees. I don't know. I like it. I think it's a little cute that way. Okay, so that's perfectly acceptable as its own, you know, design. But what if we wanted to kind of space this up? What if we wanted to break up those pine trees? So I want to put a little snowflake in between each of those pine trees. So let's just do the snowflake part first. So the snowflake part, I'm going to draw it right here. So I'm going to go up, straight up. So there's like my 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to come back down to the center and I'm going to kick out to 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock. And then I cross over up here to 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and then I come back out. So that's my snowflake. All right, so I'm going to switch to a different color just so you see. So what I would do is I would make my pine trees, right? Uh, large, medium, small, top, small, medium, large, swoop, snowflake. There's 12, back to the middle, kick out, across, down, and cross over, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and head out. Now another tree, large, medium, small in the top, small, medium, large, and kick out. Okay, so let's stitch that out. That is pine trees and snowflakes. And like I said, if you are on our newsletter list starting on November the 13th, you're going to get one of these in your inbox every day so that you can print them out and follow along with us and have a little um, grouping of holiday uh, designs that you can put on your next quilt. So I've got some black fabric here and I'm just going to give myself little registration lines and for this I'm using probably one of the most useful stencils I have and that is this just straight line stencil. So if you see I've just chalked out little registration lines across my border um, across my fabrics so that I have a target there to do my little pine trees. Okay, so I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top and I'm going to get started. Um, Kelsey, do you want me to do this in manual mode or stitch regulation mode? Try it in stitch regulation. Yeah. Okay, sometimes the manual mode just helps with a camera, so we're going to try it in stitch regulation and see how it does. Okay, so I'm going to come up, go large, medium, small, top, small, medium, large, snowflake. And then I'm headed to my next tree. Should I go? Should I go manual mode or stitch regulation? Okay. Okay. So, um, so I can already tell I needed to space these out a little bit more because I'm gonna. This tree is gonna be a little crowded. So my snowflake needed to be just a little smaller. So just you know, make yours a little further apart. Large, medium, small, small, medium, large, and snowflake. And on I would go. So let me just move the camera so that you can see. So there's my holiday pine trees and snowflakes border.
So go to that download, download the worksheet. You can put a piece of tracing paper on top of it. I've drawn the registration line so you can see where you kind of need to give your target. Otherwise, your trees are going to kind of tilt on you. So it gives you nice, tall pine trees. So um, do download that. Make sure that you're on our newsletter and you'll get um, all the other Christmas designs that I have headed your way. Uh, so today we are talking about marking on your quilt. Now you just saw me mark on this dark fabric with a chalk pencil. And so there are lots of mechanical chalk pencils out there um, and there's refills and they're just like a regular mechanical pencil um, they just have a ceramic tip to them so that you can easily mark on dark fabric they also have an eraser on the other side and so I can just erase that and by the way um, all of the marking devices that we're going to go through today you can find on a website you can also find at your local quilt shop um, and there's loads of other places you can find them but I have collected them all uh, on the Quilt of Joy website if you're interested and I do have a coupon for you um, so through November the 11th you can get 15% off any of the marking devices so anything we talk about here if you're interested you can find it over on the quiltofjoy.com website too okay so my other favorite one for um, for white or dark fabric is also going to be this school this kind of this is just regular old chalk but it's in that same kind of holder that my music teacher would always use on the chalkboard so it has a little bit of a thicker tip and it has this little grabby like octopus kind of thing on the end so it'll grab a piece of chalk um, so this gives me a little bit of a thicker line than that skinny thin um, mechanical pencil line and if I need it to be a sharper tip this is the same um, little Oh, it's got sandboard, sandpaper on it. You get it at an artist supply store. They use it, I think, um, to like on pastels to get a sharper tip, but I can also use it. Do you want to show it in front of the, uh, the other camera? In front of, sure. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Is that, is that good? That's good? Okay, perfect. All right, so it's, it's got sandboard, sandpaper stapled to the board, and then I can just rub that chalk on it and it'll sharpen. It's the same thing that artists use to sharpen down pastels. And then I can get a nice sharp tip on it. Um, so this one is just, I don't know, it feels good in my hand, it works well, it's just school chalk. And I will say to get those marks off, one easy way to get them off is with one of these cheap red velour brushes that you get at, you know, the dollar store. So you just can rub that that school chalk off with one of those cheap red velour lint brushes. Um, so those are some uh, chalk pencils that will work well on dark fabrics. Another one that will work well on dark fabrics is this one. I don't know if you've ever seen this kind. Is this good where I have it, Kelsey? Yeah. So this one um, is actually a marking device that will come off with an iron. So I just want you to be careful if you're using marking devices that you have either you stick with all the same kind. So either all iron off or all water soluble. Don't go mix in the streams because if you have a water soluble and you hit it with an iron, you're going to set it. So this particular one will come off with an iron. Um, and again, you can um, get a sharp point on it with that sandpaper board. Um, but this one is called the ultimate marking um, pencil and that'll come off with an iron. Um, as far as other chalk or mechanical pencils that I like, um, this one is, has different colors to it. So um, is this good, Kelsey? Yeah. So I can have it be either um, black or white or, or pink. Uh -huh. So if I rotate it, it'll give me a different color um, point. So for example, on the pink, so let's get the pink out here and let's see I'm going to put the pink on some green fabric so that's going to work well that's going to show up well and I'm going to put it over on the black I think it's let's see is it blue or black let's see what it is so that one is going to be a black so it just depends on the color of the fabric that you want to use and whether you want it to be water soluble or um, whether you want it to be iron off or whether you're going to use um, an eraser. So let's talk about um, some that are, are water soluble. So here's one of my very favorite water solubles. It's a Marvy. Um, it's an air erasable um, and it comes off with water and it is a purple Marvy marker and it just goes on like, like butter. It's just, it's such a nice flow to the tip. 
of it and it comes off either after 14 days um, with air or if you're in Kentucky in the summer because the humidity is so high it'll come off sooner um, or you can squirt it with a little water and it'll come right out. Um, so this pen um, is a nice one. This one a little lower. This one has um, purple on one side that's the disappearing ink and then it has blue on this side that is water soluble. So let's just put a little um, blue on the white fabric here. So Oh, okay, yeah, so we did a poll in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse there in our Facebook group, and this, um, the blue water erasable pen is the most popular um, for the folks who voted. Rachel, how many um, folks do we have voting in there? There was 62. 62, and they claimed um, that they liked that uh, water erasable um, blue one the best. So let's look at how we would get those out. This one is a water erasing, um, oh, is this the pen? Oh, wait, I have the wrong one. Hold on. Okay, this one is the eraser, and this one's made by Soline, and it has this kind of chisel tip to it, and that one I can just brush over and see how those marks come right out, and it's right on, on, right on those marks, and then it comes out with that chisel tip, and then the other uh, water erasable, or water eraser, I should say, is this one so this one you you put water in it and it has a tip here on the end that's more um a blunt tip and so then i just use it and it's just a kind of a targeted um water uh, to get that blue um water uh, soluble um, pen out and let's look at one more blue pen this one was a new one that we just got in um, this one is called hold on can you see that? Yes. It's called the Styla, and it's water erasing as well. So let's see how this one does. So again, it has that kind of fine, it's a little finer tip than that other one was. And then I can erase that again with any of those erasers we just talked about. You can also put some water in a squirty bottle and squirt it, but you may find you have a little bit better um, ability to take these marks out if you put a teaspoon of baking soda in with a cup of water and just kind of shake it up in your squirty bottle. And that baking soda will kind of act as a helper to get those blue marks out. Um, if you have anything that's super stubborn, I don't know if you've ever had that, but always test on your fabric to make sure your fabric doesn't like hold on to the mark. Um, a few will, but there aren't many out there, but you don't want to get bitten. So if you do have a problem, there is a product on the market. It's called um, Blue Line Eraser, and it'll help those blue lines go away. And it comes with a little applicator tip, and it comes with um, refillable squirty, squirty bottle, as well as a little pen full of it, too. So um, you can also, um, like I said, uh, get it out with, with just water, but sometimes it gets stubborn, and you may need to give it a little bit of help. Okay, so I think, I think I showed you all of, all of the markers I had to show you. I just wanna go through some pounce. So you may have seen these. If I lay them down here, Kelsey, is it okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so, so you may ask yourself why I have so many pounce pads. And pounce um, is, there's a terry cloth um, little pillow inside and you, open up the pounce pad with this um, little rubber stopper here and you put the chalk that comes with it inside and then that chalk will flow through the terry cloth so that you can pounce um, stencils. And by the way, when they say pounce, they don't want you, you don't actually you don't actually pounce through the stencil, you rub through the stencil. If you pounce, you're gonna um, feel like um, who's that character on uh, Peanuts? Pigpen? You'll feel like Pigpen because <laughs> there'll, be, <laughs> there'll be clouds of chalk all around you. So rub, don't pounce. Um, and the reason I keep so many of them is that I have them labeled here. So for example, this one is an iron out uh, pounce and this one is a wash out 
pounce. And so I have them separate because remember I said, if you're going to use a particular type of device, you want to make sure it's the same all the way around so you don't mix your iron off with your washout um, because if you go to iron it out, you could set the washout. So I just keep a separate little pounce of pad for each different kind of pounce powder that I use and label them so that I keep them separate. By the way, if you are using pounce on your fabric and when you rub it on and you um, are start stitching and it's starts to kind of bounce on you. Um, you've put a little too much on, first of all, but if you spritz it with some hairspray or even just a little spritz, a little mist of water, it'll just calm it down so that you can still um, stay with your lines, but they won't kind of uh, bounce up and create a little uh, cloud at you. So I hope those were helpful. There's a lot of marking devices out there and you just kind of need to find the one that you like best and find the one that you enjoy. Um, and if you ever want to see the ones that I like, they're all on the website. I only carry the stuff that I like. So I have a lot of opinions, but if you want to know my opinion, um, it's all there on the website. So um, do go over to the clubhouse and share your favorite marking device because I would love to know. There's probably one that I haven't played with. So um, just go over there and join the conversation and share what you enjoy um, using on your quilts. Um, so don't forget all the marking devices are 15% off through November the 11th. So go in there and get yourself some goodies and then be sure to sign up for our newsletter as well. Um, I want to say thank you to our sponsor APQS. APQS machines are 100% handcrafted in Iowa in the middle of absolutely nowhere, a little tiny, tiny little town, and they are loved the world over. And APQS machines all come with a lifetime warranty. So if you'd like more information about APQS machines, contact your local dealer, your local APQS store, or visit them at apqs.com. So thank you so much, APQS. We love you. Um, so our studio tour this month, where we're going to kind of looky-loo and be nosy, is with Amy Lewis in Asheville, North Carolina, and she's with the Blue Goose Quilt Company, and she's gonna give us a tour of her new studio in her new house. Hi, Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Angela, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to um, let us call in and let us see uh, what you got going on in the basement there. So I see some beautiful quilts hanging behind you. Are those just kind of like to get you inspired? Are they quilts waiting for you to quilt? Those are all vintage quilts that um, are either family uh, members have made or the one in the center with the um, llamas on it. That was one of the very first custom quilting um, quilts that I did. Awesome. So you've got inspiration there behind your machine. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you've got your long arm machine. Let's take a look at what you got. I you got, got that. Um, a Lucy. Uh-huh. And, and you're in, um, describe that where you are in the house to me. This is the basement of our house. And the reason we bought this house was because we needed a place to put Lucy. Um, and <laughs> so I'm in and it has what's called superior walls. And so it's like these metal um, walls with like blue foam and they're super ugly. And so I asked my mom for white sheets and she gave me all these white sheets, which I covered the, the ugliness with just to give me some visual space yeah. to not, you know, look at, you know, structure-y. Sure. Word. You've got some well, really is. high ceilings there in your basement too. That's, you've got a lot of ability to, to make storage. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's about 17 feet high and the actual footprint is 17 by 17. Awesome. And natural light too. So, um, so what size table do you have there in your room? This is a 12 foot table and, uh, 12 foot easel, and you told me it was 17 by 17 is the room? It is. Awesome. All right, I love the little, um, are those toys, uh, sewing machines you have up above on that shelf? Yeah, that's my collection of toy sewing machines. And that's awesome. I have some up there too. All right, and I so like take one. You have a what up there? I also like um, alphabets, and so I have two alphabets up there. and. Just little fun things that remind me of childhood. Cool. All right, so take us on a tour. Let's see what's uh, over there by your side. I saw something like a TV up on the wall. Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, I've got a, 
a gigantic TV up there and behind. <laughs> Perfect. I've got my quilting books and some scrapbooking things because occasionally I do some paper crafting. And then to the left of the TV, I have a really nice big um, design wall and a custom um, cutting table um, that my husband made. When we moved, my children decided to take apart their beds, which were just, <laughs> they were very utilitarian beds. Uh -huh. um, our house was so small, they we had to build these little custom beds in their room and their room was like tiny, but there were like three beds in there for the children. Oh, it was crazy. Uh -huh. And so they completely took them apart and we couldn't put them back together. So my husband engineered this lovely cutting table that holds two from rolls of cutting. <laughs> are, are you saying your cutting table is made from beds? Yes, they were like that's platform pretty awesome. beds. That's pretty awesome, very good. That, that's yeah. called upcycling in its finest. Well, show me, show me the cutting table. So you can cut on the top and then you've got a place for batting underneath. Yes, I can put two rolls of batting. So I have um, a roll of 80-20 uh, hobs and then a roll of 100% cotton hobs on the back side. I don't use it as often. Uh -huh. And then my husband, he also does framing and matting and things. And so he uses the same space. So it's very versatile. So he's got all of his matting tools in there on the shelves. And on the end to the right, there is a set of shelves where we keep additional matting tools and things there. Cool. And so it's on wheels, so you can move it yeah. around. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So keep going. What's 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 past the uh, cutting table? And let's be nosy. What's past all that? Okay. So I just have some paper supplies and my daughter, Liliana, she paints right here. Uh-huh. Some for cabinet sewing machine cases and things like that. And then it's on to the left, we have different projects that have been started and not finished and other supplies. Oh, I was and thinking those were fabric scraps, but those are projects that you've got labeled on the bins? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, you got enough to keep you busy for a little while, don't you? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. where's your fabric scraps if those aren't fabric scraps? Up here on the left are the actual scraps. Uh huh. And uh, they're sorted by colors. But then in the perfect, cabinet, I have larger pieces, like a half yard all the way up to five or six yards on mini bolts in the cabinet. Those are beautiful. Those are absolutely beautiful. So, are you using actual bolts that you've cut down, like you would find in a fabric store, and wrap the fabric on that? Or what are they wrapped on? Well, I would probably get in a lot of trouble if anybody knew what they were, but they <laughs> tell you what they are. It, they're just left over from boxes. So my mother and oh, mother-in-law came this summer. They cut them up to the appropriate size. They wrapped all my fabric. They went through all my fabric, wrapped it, and then color organized it for me. That's so nice. That's beautiful. Okay. All right. So where do you piece your quilt tops? Okay. So I do my piecing right here. I um, love antique machines. Those are the uh -huh. ones are, I've always been drawn to. This particular machine, my dad bought like in 1989, but I think it's around a 1950s 404 Singer. It was used in the school system. And um, so I have two of these and I name all my machines after um, my grandmother or great grandmothers, they all have a different name, basically, so I can keep up with who is who and what needs to be done. <laughs> so, what's that machine's name? This is Ruperta, and Ruperta was my grandmother. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Well, um, do you have three things that you can share with our viewers? Three favorite things that you'd share with the bestie? Not necessarily quilt related, just yes. three things? Yes. What you got? I just found this fabulous lotion. I think it's fabulous because it doesn't leave a sticky residue on your hands. And so you can use it really quickly and um, it just doesn't, it absorbs nicely. So I love it. It's Gold Bond Ultimate Healing. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite pens, I, 
I color coat everything. So these are the paper mate flare pens and they're a felt pen and they just, they draw and write beautifully. Wonderful. And you're not talking about drawing on fabric. You're talking about just like labeling things. Labeling things. I'm a teacher, so everything is labeled. Everything is written on. Right. I, In fact, I give them to my students and I encourage them to use them. Um, and it helps them just learn and remember things a lot easier if it's color coded. Cool. So, yeah, those cool. are my. And then if. Right, what's the last thing? The last thing is going to be my lights. These are plug and go lights from Sam's. They can be, um, I'm not sure the right word, but they can connect to each other. So you're only using one outlet uh -huh. with them. And um, it lights up this space like it's daylight in here. So they yeah. are absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, you have a lovely space, Amy. Thank you so much for letting us uh, take a look at it. I really appreciate your time today. If folks want to connect with you, where can they find you online? Um, at Blue Goose Quilt Company on Facebook. All right. Thanks so much, Amy. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you for um, the time that you took to show us your room and I appreciate your daughter running camera for us so that we can see your smiling face too. Um, we recorded that early earlier. Amy is a hardworking teacher there in Asheville and so she um, zoomed home a few days ago and let us kind of look around her studio. So we did pre-record that and I just appreciate Amy's time. Um, it's lovely to see how you're building your space out and how you're making it your own. So um, congratulations Amy. That's a really good nice looking studio. Um, okay so for my favorite things um, we got a couple things in Houston. Um, we were at the Houston Market and Houston Festival and so we're bringing in some of those new things that kind of caught my eye and one of them is um, these thread cu cutters so I don't know if you've seen these but there's two different kinds these have a, an adhesive back to them and then this one actually fits on your finger um, it's got a velcro velcro strap and it's actually kind of comfortable um, and it just goes around your finger but there's little blades I don't know if you can see it in there there's little blades in there to cut my threads um, so on a, a long arm machine um, there is no thread cutter on a long arm machine so um, what I've done is I've taken the, the ones that have the adhesive back and then I just pop them onto the nose of my machine so that I have a thread cutter nearby um, so I can get a crisp edge so I can thread my machine and um, you know depending on where you know it makes sense to you for me it made sense on the nose of my machine so that's why where I place them um, the other ones that have the uh, velcro strap if you have a skinny enough handle on your machine um, you can put that around the handle of your machine for my machine my handles um, have a foam pad around them so they're a little thicker than what this velcro length is but I could add an extender and then I could keep it on the handle of the machine and for sure if you had like a domestic machine that maybe the thread cutter was worn out that, um, or a featherweight that didn't come with a thread cutter um, this you could mount um, on the side of your machine and get a new thread cutter uh, to cut those threads and get a nice crisp edge so that you can thread uh, the needle so those are thread cutters um, that I found interesting so I wanted to share them with you okay so um, in the clubhouse on Facebook we ask folks to submit in a picture of an unquilted quilt top and then I take it and I kind of pick one and study it and kind of figure out how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. So Barbara, Barbara, I picked your quilt. So let's take a look at the quilt that Barbara shared in the clubhouse. So um, this one, don't you love this? All those uh, tulip pink polka dots and stripes. And I don't know if you, you are a tulip pink fan as well as I am, but um, she has those, um, those great focal fabrics that have cute little yeah I can zoom in a little bit um, um, it's not going to zoom in to give me the um, to have it be centered so let's just let's just zoom in a little bit okay so I wanted to see the wide shot but um, here you can see each of these little circles has little animals in it here let's see if we can go in even a little bit more so raccoons and look at that owl and here's a little frog. I mean, they're just, they're absolutely precious. Um, she does such a great job with her fabrics. Um, squirrels and a bird and uh, just so much fun. So this fabric, you'll notice the, it, it has a circle applique that is for that, um, fa 
focal fabric and then it's got polka dots and stripes so there's a lot going on on this quilt there's a whole lot going on in such rich fabulous colors so the first thing I want to do is kind of get a bird's eye view so let's zoom back out and by the way I'm just using a paint program um, it was a freebie I found this one particular one is called paintbrush um, there's a gazillion out there that you can get um, and then I can bring in the um, image and then I can um, actually draw on it. And what I'm using to draw on it is just a graphics tablet. Um, there's lots of them out there. The one that I have is just a hobby one made by Wacom, but there's, there's all kinds. So if you wanna do this at home, you might consider getting a drawing tablet. It just turns your mouse into a pencil so it's easier for me to draw. So here's the wide shot. And so I started thinking about how I would quilt this. And one of the first things that I started to notice was I could kind of make a frame out of these. So I'm just gonna increase the thickness of my, um, my pin here so that you can see. So here's my little raccoon. He's the middle of the whole quilt. So I started thinking, well, what if I kind of framed out this center? And do you see how it kind of keeps on going? It kind of keeps on making frames, all right? And so it's like I could do a double frame like that. And then um, that really brings all of these little guys are all kind of connected, but it still allows the centerpiece, that little raccoon to shine through. And so um, what I wanted to do was rather than do a straight line, just a single line, I really wanted to create um, a place for some free motion quilting. So let me take these off and just show you. Oh, so it only go back so far. Okay, so we're gonna ignore those two. And what I was able to do was just take, so I'm just gonna go and create a double line. So this one's gonna be a little off-centered because I'd already drawn that one. So a double line, now let's do this part up here. So I would come, and at this point, I'm not really worried about how I'm gonna connect all this as a continuous path. Instead, I'm just wanting to kind of play with the graphics of it and make sure I'm okay with the way that this looks. And then I'll start to worry about the continuous path. I kind of have it in my head when I'm doing this a little bit, but I'm not letting it like, I'm not letting it give me a speed bump. Um, I'm just playing at this point. So I thought, okay, there, now I have kind of channels that I can fill for uh, free motion. So let's put that away and let's go look. So here's where I connected it. Yeah, and then there's those channels that we talked about earlier. And so I've got these negative spaces here and um, I, you know, you're know, you not gonna really see a lot of the quilting because the fabric is talking so loud um, with those stripes and the polka dots. So whatever I do here is just gonna add texture. And so what I thought was, you know, just some wishbony. oh, I've got this really thick, uh, let me go down to the size. So I just thought this wishbony kind of filler inside those channels would be a fun little modern kind of textury way to fill in those between those two lines. And at this point I'm thinking, well gosh, when I hit the circle, I could actually use the circle to travel and stitch around and drop in and go around my little raccoony face and come back out and go around some of my little flowery shapes until I can pop back out. And then the next time I come around, I could do the other side of that little raccoony, the little flowers on the other side. So I'm just gonna, I would just go around and just fill in with these wishbony things all the way inside, inside both of these um, kind of double frames that are framing out what I've got going on around my central raccoon feature. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Oh, oh, okay, let me peek. So I hadn't filled it in. Okay, oh, don't, don't tell anybody, we just peeked again. So, so that's, where, um, that's where I had, let's go back to that one then. I got ahead of myself. Okay, so I went around and I would fill all these in, right? And so then I thought, well, what am I gonna do about these four corners? And I thought, well, I could continue on with, you know, the frames, but it would be actually kind of nice to treat this almost like a medallion, like you would a whole cloth, and have like um, rays coming off into each of the quadrants. So if I actually, uh, what I did is I just went from the tip of this one out. And again, at this point, I'm not super worried about... Um, 
about continuous line. I'm just trying to get it to where I can see and understand um, my path. So I'm gonna go, let's see, let's go one more there. So I really like things, I really like the quilting when it kind of drops behind and under other quilting. Um, I think it adds a lot of variety. So let's take a look at this um, in all four corners. So here's what I came up with. So there's that central miter line and then it comes off into um, those diagonal lines. And so here is where we had just put in those wishbony things, right? We had just done that. Let me do it on this side. And so here's where I had drawn and I thought, well, this would be a good place. I could continue on with those wishbony things in here. Yeah, on both sides. But I got to that center and I would travel around just like we talked about, right around here. And I could either travel back along that path or go around some flowers to travel back until I get over here and put more wishbony things. And I thought, but this central line here, I don't, you know, I really, I need a channel here to give myself something to fill. So let's see what I did. So um, I went out and I went around and here's all of the um, wishbony things and all of my little circles are done. I'm just going to zoom out. Well, actually, I'll just pan around so you can see. So there's my central motif. Yeah, and each of those little animals, I go around my raccoon, I go around my frog, I go around my owl. So I'm just going to follow the lines given in the fabric to kind of nail down those circles. Um, and then I just went out and around and up. And so what I thought about doing was um, I could put in another line. So let's see what I did here. So I just repeated those lines so that I have these rays going out from those, that miter so that... I'm gonna zoom out and hope that you can see it. So there's that final version. I'm gonna zoom back in and pan because I don't know that you can see it all that well that way. I'm gonna zoom in. All right, Barbara, so there, that's what I came up with. I kind of laid a medallion, um, framed out your uh, little beautiful uh, little tulip pink circles from her fabric and kind of just dressed it up and gave some texture around it. And I really wanted the fabric to be the star and let the quilting just be added texture. And let's talk about thread color here for a minute because this is one of those quilts, those few quilts where, you know, like a chartreuse, a lime green thread would look great on it. And I, I am of the opinion, if you have the opportunity to use lime green thread, take it because you don't get that opportunity every day. Um, there's not every, every uh, everyday quilts. Um, typically you won't find that many where chartreuse is the color but that would be one where chartreuse uh, lime green would be absolutely perfect. Um, so we are going to, uh, um, uh, next month on the first Wednesday of the month, December the 4th at one o'clock Eastern, 12 Central, we are gonna have our next clubhouse meeting and it's all gonna be about setting tension. It's like the number one question I get is how do I set tension? So I'm gonna go through how I like to set tension so that you can um, kind of come up with a way that you like best. But I'm gonna walk you through the method that I like best. And if you enjoyed uh, today's clubhouse, please do let me know the best compliment that you could give me would be to leave a review on Google. It helps other people find us and I read every one of them personally. And I so appreciate the time that you take to help my little business grow. We are. Um, a, a little small thing here in Kentucky, but um, have big dreams. So if you leave us a Google review, that allows others to find us more easily. And thank you for the time you've taken to do so. So um, join us on our social media page. Um, we do have that Facebook group, uh, the Clubhouse. We're also on Instagram. So when I was in Houston, I was posting photos of quilts that I um, kind of caught my eye on in Instagram. So Instagram, I put some um, things from my travels on there. So do check out our Instagram and um, um, of course, on YouTube, you can subscribe and then you're notified every time a new video is posted. So um, thank you so much. I know you have a lot of places to spend your time and I'm just so thankful that you chose to spend it with me today. So thanks and I will see you in December on the 4th at 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central. Bye. Thank you.